Duh. Good morning, I'd like to welcome you to this lecture on blind and searching airway devices. My name is Kevin Ford. Um, sorry for the lack of over, overhead in this, but um, this, this is going to be about a 30 minute lecture. So I hope you guys enjoy it and get some form of education out of it. Um, reasons for use. First of all, what is a blind insertion airway device? Anybody? Somebody? You insert an airway blindly. That's right. So, you do it uh, mainly to, to manage an emergent airway, right? But yes. It, it, right. it doesn't really matter what kind or type that your agency uses because there are, there are several. Um, our protocols for this state are, it's also your, your failed airway device. So if you attempt an innovation and you're unable to secure that airway, your your fail or your fall to device is is a blind insertion. And the, the beauty of that is it doesn't matter if you're an ALS provider or a BLS provider, you can you can you can still use it. It's gonna provide you a secure airway somewhat. It's not a hundred percent, but it's it's better than, than nothing. nothing. The real reason for use is to save lives, right? Because you need that, that airway fast. As as fast as you can get it. How long how long do you have before you start seeing residual brain damage without oxygen. Like four minutes? Four minutes. So, faster the better, right? Mm -hmm. uh, time is always always an issue. Um, blind insertion of every devices are also essential to um, all sizes and ages of patients. So the, so the king is going to like a two up to a five. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which one do you use? Well, that's going to be dependent upon your agency and what what they allow you to use, what what their standard is. Um, that's usually set by your uh, medical director. There are there are a few. We use a can LT here. Uh, some of the other agencies use the eye gel. Eye gel is more of a like a oh. um, laryngeal mask. Like a LMI. Yeah. Not very many people are used to them, but basically, just comes out of your package, and it's and it's sized by weight. It's not sized by height. Mm -hmm. If anybody wants to see them or use them, does anybody use combi tube anymore? Nobody's nobody that I know of is using a combi tube. One time, that was what every everybody was using. But now they've they've graduated, if you will, from the common to common to the to the king. Um, <coughs> responders must be properly trained on on the use of it. It, it doesn't matter which which one. To be good and proficient at it, you need to be trained, period. Um, and that's, that's just not the first time. That's 
on a on an annual basis, on a monthly basis, whatever. The more you, you use it, the, the the more proficient that you're going to be with it. <clears throat> I don't get paid by any any agency or company to, to, to say that a king is better than an IGL or a combi tube is better than any other. Um, just so You have a color system with your King LTs. I do. And I will, we do, we do, we do. Um, indication for use is apnea, unresponsive patient, without a what? Gag. Gag, Gag, Gag reflex. reflex. <coughs> Cardiac arrest, trauma, uh, and, the, and the need to secure an airway for any patient that is unable to be secured for their own. Contraindications, of course, are uh, patients with an in, 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 intact gag, um, caustic soap ingestion, uh, known as esophageal varices. Why do we not <coughs> want to use a airway on, on those patients? Bleeding. Bleeding is. Uh, mm -hmm. And if, and, if, and if they've ingested an, an acid or something something like that, that that airway could actually melt. Melt. And cause a whole, 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 whole lot of How about that? Like a, like a like boy thing? Mm -hmm. That's a really so good point. Because the, uh, the king of these are just one of them. Many and it's based on uh, height and sizes from two to five. Two is for a patient at least. How tall? Small. Yeah, 35 inches. Uh, size five is for patients over. Yep. Five one. Check So size size five is for patients over 60, right? So how do we know? How much yeah, air can be flowing in the cups? It says on the bowl. It says on the package. And if you read the package, it says on the tube. So, uh, you want to find the, the, the correct size based on the patient's weight or height. Test, test the cuff prior prior to inflation. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Remove all the air from, from both cuffs prior to insertion. Why? Because you, know, you want to make sure it doesn't have a leak. Uh, but you also want to make sure you take all the air back out. Out. So it'll seep when you well, put it in. You don't want to kind of cram that right. airway device and in cause there. trauma. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, apply a water-based lubricant. If, if you think you have enough on there, add some more to it. Um, it ain't going to hurt anything. And what you're seeing a lot now is pre-oxygenation. -oxy um, some, some agencies are using a nasal airway cannula prior, prior to uh, intubations too. Um, it's important to get their yeah, oxygen level up before you start taking away their route of oxygen administration. While you're doing it, they're not going to be able to move any, any, any air. Supplies needed for your insertion. Tube, whether it's a king, and an eye gel, you know, uh, a bag valve mask, oxygen, suction. Why is suction important? In case they have a bloody or secreted airway. Right. Um, if you can't suction, <coughs> it's a trauma, you can maintain manual stabilization and roll them and try to get 
get and sweep as much as much out as possible. Um, after it bends, you want to secure it with either tape, uh, commercial airway device. The um, iGels come with their with with their own little packet if, if you will. <coughs> Lube, and this is this is their their commercial strap for securing. I mean, this is obviously not not kind of fit. So once it goes in, the strap will go around the head, and it's going to seat in these holes here. So you just stretch it over. Um, it's kind of soft, so like foam. I don't. Does it go under the chin? It goes behind the head. Behind the head. Oh, see that one? Pass it around. <coughs> we use a commercial tube holder. Um, we use a, a commercial tube holder here. <coughs> Um, all else fails, tape. Old school was everybody uses used, used tape for every everything back back before they had these tube tamers. Yeah, everybody used used, used tape. So um, Ryan, could you, you like to come up and uh, show us the proper way to in, insert this? Sure. Yeah. Well, I'll just insulate, insulate the top. And you're going to use your syringe. Um, lube up the, uh, the tube here. You're going to hold the tongue with or yeah, hold the tongue with your thumb. Grab the chin, pull up, insert a 90 degree angle. As you insert, you're going to rotate 90 degrees so this blue line is towards the chin. And once you have it seated in there, you inflate your cup to the recommended amount of air. Never let go of the tube. Have your bag, uh, your self-inflating bag, attach CO2 to it, start inflating, look for your color change. Once you get positive air sounds, um, acetate stomach, everything's good, you can secure it. And you continue to back from there. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Ryan. Um, so it's, a little, it's important once it's, in, once it's in place to position the head in a neutral, lifting uh, position. And of course, well, before you do that, you want to check to make sure they don't have a gag. Try to run through these slides here. Um, never force the never, never never force a tube. If 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 it's not going in, there's a, a reason why. It's not going <coughs> in. So never never try to force it. You know, it's going to cause trauma. It's going to be. And the more trauma that, that you cause, the more occlusion of the airway that will be, and then you're just going to be further and further behind. <coughs> um, back to these pins. We, we, we were talking about the amount of air that we that, that we use and put in each in each pin. You see, you have to the the, the, plate, the cuff to get them out. There's a OG2 guide, if you will, on the back of the pin. So the OG will, will just Slide right in there. Slide in. Some some agencies will actually pre preload it to so when it goes in they just pop it in and it's and it's all done at one time. Um, <coughs> for a size three tube it's gonna be like forty five to sixty ml. Size four is sixty right, to right. eighty and a size five is seventy to ninety. Um, why is why is why is it important not to over over these cups? 
keep do damage to the airway. Right. Mm -hmm. Trauma. Trauma. Everybody's like, yeah, everybody's like, I need to Thin fill it up. Thing. It's too much. Um, you want to attach the BBM and bag gently. Make sure that you take note of the, the depth and mark it. Why is it important to know how how deep that that is in your airway? Make sure it's properly seated. <coughs> and if, 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 right. if you move the patient, you always want to go back and recheck it because it, that 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 tube could come up or it could go down. How do we know if it if it's in too too deep? Or if any, if any airways in it. Probably there's breath sounds on the right. Yeah, breath sounds on the right. It'll maintain it. So, another thing that we use <coughs> beyond your ears to confirm any any airway or, or um, the weight of what? Entitled. Entitled cap Why is that so so important? It verifies your tube placement. Mm -hmm. Makes mm -hmm. it's kind of like mm -hmm. kind of like mm -hmm. the, the new gold gold standard, if you, <coughs> if you would. Um, like I said, any any time you move them, it's, just, it's really good if you get in the habit to to reassess and make sure that we are. We, we haven't moved it, we haven't dislodged it too, and we're still moving air, and we're still oxygenating that patient. Because if you have it, you've defeated the, the entire purpose of putting, putting that airway in. <coughs> Excuse me, a little dry. Um, that, that's why we use the, uh, the tape, we use the commercial tube holders. There's a, a lot of uh, <coughs> litigation, if you will, over uh, proper proper tube usage, proper tube placement, confirmation. Um, you don't want to harm your patient, whether applying that tube or taking out that tube or any. Any time that did you do any what we would call it an, an invasive skill, uh, even a, a, a blind insertion fairway device, <coughs> um, you always want to make sure that you're, you're not causing more 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 harm than, than good to any to any patient. Like I said, there are several of these on the market. We used to use a combi tube, as you were saying earlier. Those things, <coughs> if you remember them, they had the the, uh, the blue and the white. Mm -hmm. and I, I, my personal opinion, I didn't, I didn't like them. I don't know a lot of folks that used them that, that did. Mm -hmm. Too complicated. Yeah. They worked. For what they were intended, but um, uh, they just looked huge. Uh, and they went in, and it just caused a lot of trauma and damage. So remember, do not depart from your local protocols for what what OEMS that you're allowed to use. <coughs> This is this King LT. I think you'll see about in, in every agency. Mm -hmm. um, I know only know of one agency that uses the <coughs> IGL now, uh, and they seem to like it. They say they have some success with it. Um, I haven't seen any research on it. I do know that they say that once it goes in, it runs up. It, Create a seal and it yeah, and it seats. Um, I I have never used it. I've used the King uh, several times. 
several, several times. And uh, the old commie tube that was the uh, eye gel. Training, training is, is important no matter what <coughs> what device your HBC is using. You need to use it to where you need to be very proficient isn't really the right word. You need to be to where you feel that you can do it in 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 the in the dark, basically. Because if you put these in, you're going to do it fast. You're going to be in a hurry. Um, the important thing is try not to omit a step. And lube is your friend when it comes to any airway device. I don't care um, how how big or how small. Um, if, if you have to, take your take your thumb and come in here and get that tongue and raise up that jaw, open it up, because not every airway is the same, um, even <coughs> mine is different than, than yours, 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 and even, even yours, I know you're special, um, but never depart from your training, go go back to it, I, I encourage you to uh, if, if your agency uses a king, go go find some expired kings. Put them in your hand, use them, inflate them. Um, one thing that I didn't discuss is, is that most people have teeth, mm -hmm. so if you're if you're mindful when in inserting your airway, you don't cut. Or nick any of these bolts on the, the on the teeth because what what will happen is you'll go in, it'll cut it, and it'll nick it, and you'll go to inflate, and you're just like, and the tube's not really going to seat and it's not going <coughs> to seal up. That's another reason to, to make note of how deep how deep that tube is because if it, it if if it, if it starts moving, and you want to be able to know it. And to recognize it, because your patient's not not getting air, you know, they're not getting 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 air. It's just a matter of time. They're going to code. Um, any any questions so far? No, I think you're hitting all the right stuff. I think it's important to know how to do this because. If we're unsuccessful with like DVL or video laryngoscopy, like I think we need to go to this and not be prideful. <coughs> like I think you know, as long as someone has an airway, you know that's the most important thing. So I think we need to abandon pride and know how to use these well. Can you give medications down it? Yes, sir. You can. Um, thanks. Just a shout out to the IO. Not very many people put meds into anymore. It used to be a very, a very common yeah, practice. Yeah. You couldn't get it. So. Access, you put all your meds in your tubes. Um, What's the length of time you put that in? <coughs> you should be able to have this out of the package and, and tested and inserted in less than a minute. What about like huh? length of time afterwards, after it's inserted? Like before it switched out to a, a more definitive airway. There are some agencies that never that never switch out, but um, I haven't re researched the numbers to, to tell you the <coughs> length of time. But that I would venture to say about the same amount of time as the regular uh, ET tube can. I wouldn't know. I haven't checked to see if you can take a bougie. In the center of this and, that's do a, what, and do a tube swap. Uh, that's what they do in the ER if so we it, want a more definitive it, airway. It makes things easier, especially if the if the airway's trash, compromised, yeah. wet, goopy, you, know, you can't see it. Uh, bougie is the, is is your friend, and, and pride goes out the door. You know, 
left it all. I can choose good. You know what? Once you do it, and you can't see it, this is, I mean, it's a, it's a what computer means of access to the, to the air. So, to recap, why do we use it? Help me out. Blindly. Blindly, right. Blind insertion, which means you're not, you're not really looking in the airway to, to ensure it's going in the, Under tracing. In the right place. Um, would it be a good idea to use it in a, let's say your, your patient was in an industrial accident setting and and you suggested some hostage. No. Negative. Negative. Yeah. Bad. Um, also, size. Like, like the, the, the king is good for like 2 to <coughs> 11, right? But anything smaller, smaller than that, you're going to have to go back to like an OPA or an MPA if you can't get it. <coughs> Why? They just don't. Make them. Make them, and it recommend them for use in that size. Um, trying to remember how I covered that. Um, the, 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 she called it a tube tamer, which is a commercial device. It's just, it's going to lock in and, and lock down on that tube is going to go around the head. It's just going to secure it. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really good means. Uh, but all else fails, tape, 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 tape. Um, any more questions on that? What's the, the little port on the side of the eye gel? Is it for supplemental oxygen or is it for... <coughs> um, it is. It's for oxygen. I mean, it looks too small for oxygen. Oh. It, you can put an oxygen, oxygen in it. Well, they can, you can freeze it. You could put a ballad in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It looks a little small. Yeah, I'm, I apologize. I'm not as versed and up to speed on that high gel. Yeah, we preload them in the ground. Of course, both of them. There's a, there's a, there's a two port here that it looks like it's for an a OG2 okay. as well. Yeah, one another one that's on the top, top but that, cap. that little one, the cap on the one. Maybe suction, maybe? Lavage. It's not oxygen. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sweet. I'm old. I'm old. All right. Um, any more questions, comments, concerns, feedback? <coughs> um, thank you. Uh, Thank you, Kevin. I hope you enjoyed this and you got